Hey everybody, so this is gonna have to be a filler week because as you know right now I am working on the next few country episodes But in the meantime, this is gonna be part two of the last video that I did for filler week Explaining the largest cities in the USA per state But before I get into it I got a quick announcement So a while back I checked the UN's website on the statistics division and as of recently They just officially accepted the switch of the name between Swaziland to Eswatini So taking all of that into account for the very first time We will nullify the alphabetical rule for geography now and the next episode will be a Swatini. Woohoo! That has never happened before on the show. Anyway, let's get into these cities, shall we? Billings, Montana. This is like the city you fly to if you want to visit Yellowstone National Park because it's like the largest major city in close to the area. I've known people that have lived here and they said it's kind of like a small town with a lot of people that accidentally became a city. It's one of those wild west cities where like a lot of famous cowboys lived and died. I've never been here, but I feel like the people here probably really like to carve wood. I don't know if you're from Billings, is that true? Do you like to carve wood? Omaha, Nebraska. Omaha is like the deep core of the Midwest. I knew somebody from Omaha and they joked that Omaha is like the city that you're born in so that you can move out. <laughs> they literally even have a bronze sculpture park dedicated to the people that moved out in Conestoga wagons back in the 1800s. They have a huge pedestrian bridge. They host the College World Series. They have five Fortune 500 companies found here, including Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway. Of course, he lives there. But most importantly, Omaha is famous for its steaks. Some of our best steaks come from here. They're literally shipped all over the world in like those dry ice containers. You know it's good if it's from Omaha. Las Vegas, Nevada. Keep in mind though, all that flashy casino stuff on the Las Vegas Strip is technically not part of Las Vegas City. It's part of a separate entity called Paradise, which is kind of like an unincorporated town of the USA. It used to be run by the mafia or whatever, something like that. Vegas is basically Los Angeles' crazy ex-girlfriend that he keeps hitting up out of Loneliness. And literally, I'm not even joking, everything has a casino in it. The gas stations, the grocery stores, the 7-Eleven. Medical assistance, just go around the roulette table. The thrills, the lights, the shows, the overdraft fees. I mean, if this type of recreation is your thing, then I say go for it. But for me, no offense, Las Vegas, but you're just a little bit too much for me. Manchester, New Hampshire. Manchester is what I would like to call a novelist city. You know how all those famous authors like Stephen King or that dude who wrote Catcher in the Rye, they just kind of like disappear from the public eye and they hide away in these placid, serene, foresty atmospheres. That's basically Manchester. It's a place where rich authors can just like hide. Otherwise, uh, let's see what else my research says. They have this huge converted mill building from the 1800s. There's a lot of good kayaking and skiing in the winter, I guess. Newark, New Jersey. It's like New York's little sidekick slash conjoined twin. Today they have the busiest shipping port in the East Coast. They have an old Irish Catholic church. They have the largest cherry blossom field. Oh, Michael B. Jordan, Joe Rogan, Queen Latifah, Joe Pesci, and Whitney Houston are from here. Ah, I didn't know that. Albuquerque, New Mexico. Breaking Bad made this place famous. And Albuquerque is like one of the largest metropolitan cities that has one of the largest percentages of Native Americans in it. I think the population is like somewhere between five to 10%. You see tribes like the Navajo, the Apache. They even have their own culture and community centers. And it's really crazy because the city is like on a very flat plain, but like juxtaposed to these very amazing eroded desert, rocky red mountains. They have like a hot air balloon festival every year. Oh, and they love putting green chili on everything. New York City, New York. Yeah, you all know this place. Anyway, New York is our country's largest city by population. New York is basically the US's gateway to the world. They host the UN and like consulates for like almost every country in the world. Speaking of which, New York is the most linguistically and disputably ethnically diverse city in the world. At least 800 languages are spoken by minority groups in the city. The city is divided into five boroughs that kind of act like counties. New York has so many schools that they just kind of like gave up on naming them and just name them by number. They have their own city style hot dogs, pizza. We all know the main tourist attraction, so I'm not even gonna mention them. But I will say this, people live in New York for their entire lives and even they barely scratch the surface of New York. Charlotte, North Carolina, AKA Buzz City. I guess they really like bees or hornets. I mean, they named their basketball team after the hornets. It's what I like to call a checkerboard city. It's like half black, half white with sprinkles of Latinos and Asians every so often. Uh, let's see what my research says. For 10 years between 2004 and 2014, Charlotte ranked as the country's fastest growing city, nearly doubling in size.
size. Whoa. Jobs have been opening up like rapid fire and housing is cheap. I don't know. The feeling I get is that Charlotte is kind of like probably a place where people have block parties and they play the stereo on their porches as they sit down and let the kids run around in the sprinklers on hot, humid summer days. Fargo, North Dakota. Fargo, like Omaha, is a Midwestern city. And it really likes to capitalize off of the movie Fargo. They actually have a wood carving of Marge the cop. They even have the wood chipper from the movie at the visitor center where you can take pictures of yourself pretending to be a sociopath. Yeah, that was a pretty messed up movie. Fargo is a pretty small city and it's home to one of our largest Scandinavian communities. It kind of shares its general metropolitan area across the river with Minnesota. Here you can find the Hjemkomst Center that features a Viking ship that actually was sailed to Norway as well as a traditional Stafkirk Norwegian style stave church. I don't know, I just feel like if you want that endearingly warm but kind of weird typical Midwestern culture, come to Fargo. Columbus, Ohio, the Buckeye City. What is a Buckeye? It's this nut thing that grows from a tree and it looks like a deer's eyeball, hence Buckeye. And it's literally their mascot. Like, I'm not even joking. Their mascot is a nut. And it's the name of their most famous college football team, the Buckeyes. It's like the biggest deal in Ohio. Oh, and they hate Michigan. Uh, I know that Wendy's, America's favorite female artery clogger, was started here. Uh, what else do they got? They have a cool botanical garden with bushes trimmed to look like George Surratt paintings. Ah, oh, that's cool. Ah, there's an Arnold Schwarzenegger statue. And there's a weird corn henge thing. And there's a cursed handprint that cannot be scrubbed off. <laughs> Ohio, you so crazy. Oklahoma City or the OKC. Now I said before that Oklahoma is like the tornado state and Oklahoma City is like the tornado capital. People here know how to adapt. Each house has like a stocked up underground cellar that they can hide to, kind of like a panic room in case of tornadoes come. Oklahoma City is like where cowboy country begins. They even have a cowboy museum. All I know is that if I come back here, there's one place I want to check out. Mr. Spriggs Barbecue, winner of the world's best low budget public access commercial ever. Mr. Spriggs Barbecue, it's always Mr. Spriggs Barbecue. Portland, Oregon. It's either very active in like hiking or kayaking, forest adventuring, or it's like very hippie-ish, vegan-y, new age-y, I'm spiritual but not religious type of city. No surprise, it's disputably the most environmentally friendly city in our country. It has like the highest ratio of bicyclists per capita, over 10,000 acres of public parks. I'm gonna go off on a limb. I, I don't know, I could be wrong. I, I think Portland would probably be like the lesbian capital of the USA. I don't know, I just, I, I, I have a weird feeling it, there's probably like a ton of lesbians over there. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, or Philly, the city of brotherly love. Like that's literally what it translates to from Greek. Philly is one of our largest cities. It usually ranks in the top five and it's like the history city for whatever limited history we have as a country. At one point, it actually was our country's capital. It's got a lot of historic sites like the Liberty Bell, Independence Hall, where like our declaration was signed or something. Half of everything is named after Benjamin Franklin. He's like a big deal out there. It's also where Rocky was filmed and they got a statue of him. If you come here, you gotta get a Philly cheesesteak. Providence, Rhode Island. I don't know anything about this city, so I'm just gonna have to do research. Uh, let's see, it's one of the oldest cities in our country. It was built by a dude that got exiled from pilgrims in Massachusetts, okay. Oh, Brown University, another Ivy League school is in Providence. Oh, uh, it actually has a noticeable Portuguese and Cape Verdean community. That's, oh uh, yeah, yeah. Did I mention, I think I mentioned that in the Cape Verde episode, didn't I? Otherwise, I don't know, Providence, you're just like a big mystery to me. What are you? like? Make something of yourselves. Yeah, that's the thing. I feel like Rhode Island is like the, sit the state where we're like, come on, do something. We're like poking it with a stick. Rhode Island, come on, do something. Charleston, South Carolina. For Charleston, it's kind of like, imagine everything you think you know about Southern culture, but then give them access to the ocean with nice, amazing beaches. Suddenly you have surfing Dixies. It's also home to the Gullahs, America's pan-African community that speaks their own Creole. They're famous for their festivals and making grass-weaved baskets. Oh, and they love shrimp. They put shrimp in everything. Oh my God. The more research I do, the more intrigued I am. I, I want to check out this place. I want to go here. Sioux Falls, South Dakota. The gateway to the plains. Named after the Sioux tribe, one of the most prominent tribes in the north. South Dakota is like the beginning of Buffalo Territory. American Bison. I mean, they filmed that Academy Award winning movie Dances with Wolves here with the Lakota tribe. There's that really famous buffalo hunting scene. They've really revamped and changed up their civil engineering structure. Like now they have this really cool park with a waterfall. They have like a sculpture walk. A museum that features Rodin 
Zen art pieces, a butterfly house, a trampoline park, Japanese gardens, a zoo. And it's crazy. It's like all in the middle of some cornfields of middle America. It's like the smallest city with like all the concentrated aspects of a large city. See, it's like America has all these weird like cool cities in the middle of it, but nobody knows about it yet. And that's my job to let you know. Memphis, Tennessee. I passed by Memphis one time and I will say that is a cool looking pyramid. Memphis is nicknamed the home of the blues and the birthplace of rock and roll. It's where famous people like Elvis, Johnny Cash, Aretha Franklin, B.B. King, they all got their starts here. It's got Graceland, a place that's completely devoted to Elvis. And uh, yeah, they're famous for their uh, barbecue. I've never had it, but I heard it's real good and it like melts in your mouth. Yeah, Kansas City, you got some competition. Houston, Texas, the space city. Now for Texas, there's two giants, Dallas and Houston. Dallas is like the shiny, flashy luchador that steps into the ring, whereas Houston is like his trainer slash manager. Houston is a place that has like that strong Texan ranch culture, but in this cool, like evolved 21st century, you know, metropolitan tech business setting. For one, it's home to the NASA space station and mission control. It's incredibly diverse. Like they have two Chinatowns. Of course, Latin culture is strong down here too, but it's interesting because a lot of the Mexicans here are like 10th generation Mexican Americans. The city has so many things going on. Like every February and March, there's like this huge rodeo show, a car festival, and like one of the most iconic experiences, Tex-Mex, Salt Lake City, Utah. Everybody just knows this place as the Mormon headquarters of the world. The entire city's like street grid pattern is built so that it can have the temple in the center. However, less than half the population of the city actually is Mormon. What's really cool about this city though is that they have a lot of Pacific Islander minorities, like Samoans and Tongans, mostly part of the Mormon church. Aside from all that, the city is located on the Great Salt Lake, the largest salt lake in the Western Hemisphere. Only a few shrimp and algae can survive in it, but there's like a lot of birds that migrate there. When the water levels drop, you can see this thing. It's located in the high arid Rockies. So you have these like amazing, beautiful eroded rock formations with amazing ski slopes everywhere. Burlington, Vermont. All I know is that Bernie Sanders was like mayor of this city. That's all I know. So I'm gonna do some research. It sits on Lake Chaplin and it's like a 20 minute drive away from Quebec, Canada. They have the world's largest filing cabinet. It's where Ben and Jerry's ice cream started. Oh, uh, see, they have a giant pumpkin festival. Ooh, that's cool. Kind of like Portland, where it's like a predominantly white, but like super liberal place. You know, they say they're all about like multiculturalism, even though like only two black people live there. No, but seriously, like Burlington, I imagine it's a really nice place to just relax. I'd say go there if you just want to chill. Oh, and get maple syrup. Vermont maple syrup is like the best in our country. Virginia Beach, Virginia. Really? Not like Richmond or Alexandria or Norfolk? Oh, it's like right next to Norfolk folk, but it's not incorporated, so that's why. Okay, whatever. That's like what the OC is to Los Angeles. Uh, I've been to Virginia plenty of times, but I've never been here, so I'm gonna have to do some research. Here we go. It has the site of the first landing of English settlers that came into our country and built Jamestown. Ah, so that's why this place is so popular. This is like the place where the USA got its first baby steps. Okay. It also has a lot of museums, aquariums, parasailing, boat tours, and dolphin watching. I feel like Virginia Beach is probably a place where people with bachelor's degrees go to retire, and they just want to like take it easy without any risk for the rest of their lives. Seattle, Washington. Seattle is interesting because you still get that like rough pioneer log cabin vibe, but like in a concrete uber refined upscale coffee shop setting. The people here fish and hunt by day, but study hard by night. Tech and aeronautics are huge out here. So many companies and startups. Starbucks was started here. Like the very first original Starbucks is like in a very narrow walkway. You have Pike's Place where they throw fish at each other. Gasworks Park is strange, but but really cool to check out. They have a monorail system. It is a little bit pricey though, so if you come here, just kind of watch your budget. Charleston, West Virginia. Charleston is like the capital of Appalachia. Like you cannot get more Appalachian when your entire city is literally located in the smack dab middle of the Appalachian Mountains. Like not in a convenient valley at the base of the mountains, literally in the middle. They even had to level an entire hillside just to build their airport. If you've ever seen the Hunger Games, Charleston is probably like District 12 territory. They're known for being one of the cities that started off of coal mining. They got thick mountain forests and thick, thick mountain accents. I remember I stopped to get gas here at a gas station and I, I, I could not understand like half of what the cashier was saying. It's interesting though, because they're so geographically isolated that Charleston kind of like developed their own weird mountain subculture. Fiddles, banjos, and they put weird stuff in their food, like chili and coleslaw hot dogs, pepperoni rolls. They love moral mushrooms and ramps. I don't even know what a ramp is, but they 
they love them. Or they love deer meat, like venison. Like at gas stations, you can find like deer jerky. I don't know, I'd say if you wanna see American hill culture, come to Charleston. Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Oh, Milwaukee, Chicago's drunk little brother. You love beer so much, you literally named your baseball team after beer brewing. You love beer so much, you mixed it with cheese and made a soup to eat after being hungover from drinking beer too much. I mean, go figure, a ton of Germans moved in in the 1800s and they're like, nope, we're gonna show you how to really make beer. And today they have one of America's crown and glory brands, Miller. I've said it before, everybody in America needs at least one friend from Wisconsin. Like, I know I said Chicago is like the comedy capital of the USA, but they do steal a lot of people from Wisconsin. And Milwaukee is kind of like the hub of the true comedians. Oh, and it's also a city that like bikers love. Like they have the Harley Davidson Museum. I mean, yeah, they have a lot of other cool stuff going on, like museums or like kite surfing on the lake. But let's be honest, <laughs> you guys are a beer city and you're proud of it. God, I love you guys. And finally, we end off with Cheyenne, Wyoming, the cowboy city. Come here if you want to see like real old school, like stereotypical Western film style cowboy American culture. They have it all. Like you can literally buy like lassos and like the hats and the boots with the, what do you call it? The spurs. Also, it's like tons of American bison here. And uh, they're famous for having the world's largest outdoor rodeo. They call it the daddy of them all. And they have like a huge cook-off and carnival. I don't know, I feel like people from Wyoming, they really enjoy their space. Like they don't want to get too close to a lot of people. But when it's time to celebrate, Oh my gosh, they all just show up. I've never been to Wyoming, but yeah, I wanna go there. I wanna go there. Someday, I wanna go there. So that's that. Uh, I tried my best to summarize all of the largest cities in each of the states. I may have gotten a few things wrong, especially with Rhode Island. Like, Rhode Island, just tell me, who are you? What are you? But yeah, you know, there's so much going on in the US, more than just LA and New York. It's like, there's so many things in the middle. You gotta check out all the stuff in the middle. So yeah, that's about it. Uh, thank you for watching, and stay tuned for new episodes and videos. I hope you have a good one. Stay cool, stay tuned.